Hello and welcome back. Eddie Radosevich and Bob Prisbello joining us here in Soonerscoop.com studios. Welcome back to the Soonerscoop.com YouTube page. This is a hoops report. It is basketball season and OU's off to its best start since 2015-2016, Bob. Uh, pretty pleasurable right now. They look like a pretty damn good basketball team. Everything that Porter Moser talked about in the offseason, about being more athletic, being longer, and being able to score... So far, it has not been just lip service. They have lived up to that billing. Coming across of, uh, you know, after two wins out on the West Coast in San Diego at the Ratty Children's, uh, what was it, an invitational? Yes. Was it an invitational a win over Iowa and then in the championship game last Friday? We were covering the OU basketball game, or the OU football game, rather, the season finale against TCU. That was almost a fumble. That was almost a block. Uh, but... They came away with a win, and it was a game that they trailed by eight in the second half. What was kind of your biggest takeaway? I think because we looked at that one. We talked about it on the unofficial 40 as well, that you needed to go out there and play well against two like-minded opponents in Iowa and USC. Yeah, you had to show that you can compete against these type of teams. You know, we liked how they looked in the first four sure. games, but we didn't really learn much. Sure. We learned a lot about their mental toughness, about their ability to handle the moment, and now we'll see if they can build off that. Something Porter Moser talked a lot about today. 100%. Real quick for the uh, YouTube viewer out there, if you're watching us, you usually, uh, you're probably familiar with our shenanigans. A really good offer for the YouTube viewer, though. Two months, one dollar. That is Two months, one dollar at Soonerscoop.com. Use promo code OU1. That is OU1 for two months of Soonerscoop.com for one dollar. You're literally stealing from me. So even if uh, you like Bob, but you don't like me, you might as well do it. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. And we're coming off of uh, the coaching search, all of that kind of stuff. Seth Luttrell and uh, Joe John Finley named uh, offense coordinators for Oklahoma today. Seth Luttrell will be the play caller, quarterbacks coach. John, uh, Joe John Finley. Obviously going to stick with the tight ends and has, uh, you know, the title and all of that kind of stuff. Plenty of coverage there. So, Bob, tomorrow night, Thursday night at McCaslin Fieldhouse, Oklahoma returns to the hardwood. Now 6-0 and on the season and a pretty unique opportunity for a lot of people tomorrow night at McCaslin. It really is. You know, one thing Porter Moser has tried to do ever since he arrived is build that student fan base. You know, even though the on-court success hasn't been there like they would have liked, the first two seasons, he has kept just kept trying to get students to come to these games. And this is a great chance you know, that's going to be packed with students. We'll see what kind of atmosphere they can bring. And it just worked out. You know, when he announced this initially, I was scared. I was like, what if they're three and three going into this type of or four and sure. two? And there's no one that's going to show up instead. Six and oh. Ranked number 25, a lot of reasons to be excited. It should be a great night. On Wednesday, we had an opportunity to go over to the McCaslin Fieldhouse, a uh, unique setting in its own right. Talking to Porter Moser as well as Latre Dart Hard on yeah, the I'm excited Thursday about this game, game. I, uh, the atmosphere there. I'm a historian. I love history paving the way for the future. And you, I came here to a volleyball game my first year here and to see you know Alvin Adams, Gar Hurd, guys, legends that played here. Um, and I just started visualizing, like, what would it look like with this vertical arena? I've been everywhere trying to get the students to have such an impact. And uh, so I just thought it'd be cool for the students to see, like, how loud it can get right on top of the floor. And uh, so I think it's going to be a great atmosphere. You mentioned that, Porter. What gave you the idea that let's just have, let's just have the students? That's it. You know what? I think that's gotten kind of taken out. I mean, I, I want all the students there, but I'm, like, I'm not saying like nobody can come in without being a student because I think we do have some select people. I mean, we're bringing those players back. We got so, um, but I just thought it'd be really cool for the students to be right on top of the floor, on the sidelines, you know, everywhere. Just, and then hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll be excited and, and it, we can visualize what Lloyd Noble would look like packed. And uh, that was part of it. Just, I just thought it would be a cool idea. That's a real throwback feel. Like. <laughs> I'm used to the smaller gyms. I, I haven't really played at a big school like this, but it feels good to go back to a little smaller gym and get the crowd into it. I think everything's just like a lot closer. Everybody's on top of each other. So like, I feel like it's a, a lot closer environment. People feel like they're a part of the team in, in action. Practice here yesterday, practice here today. I mean, it's 10 feet. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the old uh, Hoosier, Hoosier thing. Hoosiers thing, right. but like, uh, no, but it is, it is. It's the same thing. The, the, the tricky thing is the lines on the side. I, I would probably say two things are going to happen with the Lions so close. One is there might be like, and out of bounds where you don't realize what line it is. And the two things is, I'm gonna go back to my playing days. I hope I don't do this, 
but I might end up taking a charge from one of the officials because there is no room to run on the sideline with the coaches. So I got to be ready for that um, on the sideline. Need to call John Higgins in tomorrow night. I know. Get yeah. him out of retirement. <laughs> You're coming I'm, off. That. I'm not baiting on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun there with uh, Porter Moser on Wednesday over at the McCaslin Field House. And uh, Bobby, it is a really unique opportunity. And I think that it's going to be a lot of fun for the students that, you know, I. We've talked about it before, Lloyd Noble Center, not so much. I think everybody kind of knows our opinion about that. But getting the students involved, how many games, I don't know how much it means in the long run, but how many games could they mean to change momentum of a second half, uh, you know, when things move back over to the Lloyd Noble Center? This is a perfect time to kind of debut this basketball team without Oklahoma playing in the Big 12 championship this weekend. Exactly. Kind of like catch you up. Who is this team? Okay, I'm ready. You know, football's not playing the Big 12 championship. Tell me about why I should care about this group. They were eight. Sure. And, they were eight and seven at home last last year. Right. That's just not going to get the job done. That's not a home court advantage. And so that's kind of the blueprint is tomorrow night because that's what Porter wants. It's yeah. a smaller arena. Yeah, sure. You know, obviously he's been sure. to Austin. He's been to the Moody Center. Yeah. That's what I want. And so this will give the administration, give Moser, the players, an idea of what that could look like here going down the road. No doubt about it. And this is a fun basketball team, as we said at the top, off to its best start at 6-0 and for uh, the first time since 2015, 2016. That's yes. going all the way back to the year before they went to the Final Four, that correct? Is, that's or the, the Final Four. Final that is the Final Four year. I always get those years mixed up because you move on and you go 2016 Final Four. It, it, I'm not smart. I think you all know that out there. But... At the same time, I don't know if this team has a buddy healed, but they are in the top 25 for the first time under Porter Moser. Absolutely, and that kind of shook me a little bit. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. They, were they really, had not been ranked. Like They were good that first. They were 12-3, and three, but if I remember right, they were 26 that first that year. That was as close as they got I in think the first they, year. they got okay. to 26, and then they lost that week, and so they never had a chance to get into it. But, I, I mean, as Porter said, obviously that's not the goal, but that's just what's going to happen. If you're as good as what you're hoping and what you think you can be, you're eventually going to be ranked, and it's just going to keep on moving up. And a lot of it's based on preseason. No one saw this team as maybe even like a top 100 team. Sure. So as you win games against Iowa, USC, you're not putting yourself like into the teens, but you're getting yourself into the national conversation at 25. You take care of business here Thursday night then Providence and Arkansas, you really get a chance to show people what you're all about. I was going to say, not much of a, a competition, I wouldn't think, on Thursday night against Arkansas Pine Bluff. I know that he said that they jacked a lot of threes uh, here coming into Norman, but it is going to be a unique atmosphere. Porter Moser did talk about the top 25 ranking and accomplishment on Wednesday. I, t I told our guys, it's, it's, it's being ranked is not the destination. It's just part of the process if you're, you're moving where you want to go. It's part of where you want to go. I mean, we want the fans to get excited. We want that's just part of where we want to go. But it's not the destination, and those guys got to keep that in perspective. That there's reasons why we're doing things good. I think we're really doing things defensively. Um, we're you know we're offensive rebounding. We've been pretty efficient offensively. So we got to keep doing those things. But it's it's a it's a it's a complete chase. You're chasing where you want to go. We didn't chase being in the top 25. It's just part of the process of where we're trying to go. As you said, Bob, they're going to have uh, multiple opportunities here before, uh, you know, you get into January, you get into conference play here over the next two weeks, even before Christmas. It seems like they have a lot of opportunity if they want to really position themselves well in the net rating, which you said, I believe, comes out when? I believe it's Monday. OK, I next believe, Monday. Yes. And but you have Providence, you have Arkansas, you have North Carolina coming yep. up in a couple weeks. You have a great opportunity to really build a resume. As we know, the Big 12 is going to be incredibly tough. Yeah, you were looking at this five game with uh, against real competition. It's like they go three and two, that's not bad. They're two and zero. Oh. Sure. So now we're talking about going one and two against the Friars, the Razorbacks, Tar Heels. I think they can do it. I just I've been impressed just with the ability of all those eight eight guys, as Port Motor has said repeatedly. We have eight starters for all those eight guys to just adjust whatever role, whatever minutes are being asked of them to play. And just being selfless about it. Understanding this is what I need to do to get the team to win. This is what I'm going to do. One of those guys that has led the team in minutes per game is Javion McCollum. 28.2 uh, minutes per game. And really kind of become a, uh, I think, kind of a leader within this group. And especially a score that I don't think that they had had in a while. 
Yeah, I think when he came from Siena, a lot of people saw Siena, and that's all they really recognized. They rolled their eyes like, it's going to be another down year. He's getting guys from Siena. That's what I'm supposed to be excited about. But if you watched him play, you know he can score. It's going to be fascinating. We saw Grant Sherfield do this. That was going to be my question. In the non-conference yeah. last year. Light, light it up, night in, night out. But then the wear and tear. So we'll see how he handles it. But he's just so quick. He gets his speed into the game with him and Los. When they work off each other, it's really a nice thing to watch. And... What we learned through San Diego, not not afraid of the moment. He didn't make the shot. We know o- Otega came in, had the game-winning tip in, but Javen was not afraid to try to make that last second shot. We talked about Grant Shurfield, and you know he had the success in the non-conference, and then you got to not, a conference play, you got it against bigger guards. Javen McCollin, not necessarily the biggest guy in the world. It feels like that transition is going to maybe be a little bit easier for him. It seems like getting to the rim – having a feel for the game is maybe a little bit easier than say a Grant Sherfield that it seemed like he needed others to create for him a little bit more. Yeah. I think Javian won't have trouble trying to get to the hole. And I also think he's going to do a good job of maybe not avoiding contact, but I think he's going to know how to get free, get that sep- that, that separation to where he's not taking those hits night in night out. And I think there's a lot of other trust in some of the teammates where we knew Sherfield sure. bails out. Sure. There's four in the shot. You need to shoot it. Someone's yeah. got to shoot it. I don't think that'll be an issue. One of those guys uh, that we do want to highlight as well, Otega Owe. We saw him as a freshman a year ago. Uh, it seems like when, in terms of somebody that you go, oh, yeah, that guy's made a jump, Otega fit that bill? Absolutely. No sophomore slump at all from what he has shown these first six games. We used to like sort of cringe when he would take an outside (laughs) jumper last year. Now he's shooting it very well, a lot of confidence, and he's still that same guy who can slash to the hole, brings the energy night in, night out, but he's just refined his game so well. I mean, clearly we'll see what happens after you have a game-winning tip-in. Sure. How that he's going to build off of that, but he has just been – the most consistent player of the first six games has been Otega, and I don't think anybody would question that. Team leader in points, team leader in steals, I believe, through the first six games for Oklahoma. It it, it also seems like, and we can fit Los Uzon into this as well, it seems like they're very comfortable kind of being the guys around here right now. Yeah, it's something they had to be. You know, I asked Los about that back at media day. It's like, dude, you're a true sophomore. Yeah, and, sure, and it feels and, like he's been here for three and years. you need to be the leader. Like, they you, they don't have a choice. You need to be that guy only in your second year. And him and Otega have been more than willing to step up, and now they're learning. They don't have to do it alone. These first these first year portal guys are more than willing to lean, have their experience kind of help along, too. And it's really nice how those pieces have come together. That's what we have. The cohesion, chemistry, how, how quickly is it coming together? A lot better this time around compared to the first two years. And you wondered how, how quickly it was going to come together because, and like a lot of teams in college basketball these days, you're rebuilding a roster through the transfer portal. One of those guys being John Kugley, who has been, I think, a very, very pleasant surprise for Oklahoma fans being a big guy. A big guy. They actually have a five, Bob. They actually have a five, and I know people were confused. I admit I was. When he didn't start the first game, Sure, people were like, is he being disciplined? Is he injured? Is he having the mental health issues again? Like, what's going on? Why is Sam Godwin starting instead of Hughley? And said that's just the way the rotation is working out. Hughley is making the most of his minutes. He's showing the back to the basket moves. But we've all just sort of been scratching our heads. He's made seven threes. I I don't think anyone thought he'd make seven threes. 70% from uh, behind the arc for the 6'10", 275 big man. I didn't see making him uh, making seven threes for the entire season. But he's been sensational playing his his role. He said he's learned a lot practicing against against Godwin. They've made a very nice one one two punch there in the uh, post and again it's just guys that are understanding i'll have to play 30 to 35 sure. minutes but i'll give you everything i got for 20 25 let's talk a little bit about some of the other new guys latre darhard has been a guy that has uh you know given oklahoma really good minutes uh rivaldo suarez the transfer in from oregon's been really good uh sam godwin not a new guy but as you said it seems like the minutes that he's giving you on the floor right now it's a lot of really positive contribution yeah, they're just they're playing within themselves. They know what they bring to the table. Darthard, Soros, they're going to be two of your better 
defenders, and they've absolutely done that. Godwin's one of your best guys on the glass. He's done that. I mean, one of those games, I think he had 12 points, 10 rebounds, and 15 minutes. Sure. Like, that's the type of efficiency we just haven't seen during these first couple of years. And as long as these guys, you know, stick to the plan and don't try to play here, they don't need to play here. Yeah. As they work as a, co- as a collective unit, they've been able to get the job done. And that's what we're, we've are we learned through the first month of the year. Another one of those guys that we haven't hit on yet that has been another pleasant surprise that was found through the transfer portal, Jalen Moore. What have you thought about Jalen Moore so far this season? Yeah, going back to the summer, everyone's telling me, dude, this guy can jump out of the building. You're, right. you're going to have a lot of fun watching him. I'm like, yeah, but can he play? Big deal. He can jump. So what? In that Iowa game, that was his coming out party. You know, and, and he doesn't need to do that every single night. And that goes back to something we've been talking about, what Porter's been talking about. I don't – we've got four or five guys who can show up and show out every, you know, on a given night. So more – that game against the Hawkeyes gives you an idea that you can trust him going forward. And he's got that ability to score 18 points on just seven shots. That was a very impressive outing. Perhaps no better uh, representation of just the drastic athletic difference that Oklahoma has on the roster, uh, you know, from top to bottom, really, than Jalen Moore, the uh, the transfer from Georgia Tech. It will also be interesting, too, as we start working our way through the end of December, into Big 12 play, and obviously how good the Big 12 is going to be. It seems like, have they started to kind of cut down as far as how yes. many guys are starting to play? I noticed that over the weekend in San Diego. Yeah, they got a, a firm eight. And then Luke Northweather and Caden Cooper are kind of on peripheral. Like, sure. can we get them in? How are they practicing? Are they earning more time? Sure. And I, I, I'd be very curious to watch what they do with uh, Cooper. I, I thought he'd have a bigger role. Not saying he's a disappointment. Yeah, state. sure. I, you can tell that this he's, he doesn't look like a freshman. Correct. It's just those portal guys, I think, have been a little bit better than maybe what I even thought. Yeah. So Cooper hasn't needed to play a bigger role, but he needs to – Stick with it. Not get discouraged that the minutes aren't there. They're going to need him going down the road. And I would imagine that somebody like a, new, a Luke Northweather, even though he is uh, just a redshirt freshman, that you start getting into Big 12 play, a John Hughley or a Sam Godwin get into foul trouble, he's going to have to play down low. Absolutely. And I think that's what they're trying to figure out where he fits exactly. I know they like the idea of Luke and John playing together. and That hasn't panned out. Sure. So they've kind of gone away from that, and so that changes your rotation just a little bit. But we're seeing, again, he didn't play. I mean, the redshirt rule we have in football, you know, Porter would love to have that in basketball. Mm-hmm. That could have meant, like, Luke could have played eight to ten games last year, and you got an understanding of what he could do. But if you play, that's it. Yeah. If you don't have a season-ending injury, that is it. You lose your redshirt. So he's still getting, acc- getting acclimated, and we're still figuring out what Luke can r- really do. It's going to be a lot of fun as Oklahoma returns to the hardwood on Thursday night in Norman, Arkansas, Pine Bluff coming up on Thursday night, as we said, at McCaslin. It's going to be a fun event for, uh, you know, a lot of the students. Hopefully everybody uh, shows out and goes over there. It's going to be a really good atmosphere. And then you start kind of getting into the bevy of what I feel like is the true non-conference portion of the schedule outside of the, uh, the Feast Week stuff that Oklahoma played in in San Diego last week. Really interested to see what... You know, not only is you know the, the scene going to be like against Providence up in Tulsa at the BOK Center, and then they make that trip out for the Jordan Brand Classic against North Carolina, who is also another ranked opponent. Yeah, well, Arkansas is weird, right? Because the Hogs haven't played well. Sure. So now we're going to go in the next Saturday thinking, oh, you should win. And that is a complete role reversal from what we thought at the first of this month. So uh, we talked a, a lot about it with football after it beat Texas. How would they handle People thinking they should be one of the best best teams in the nation. I'm not saying it'll be like that exactly for OU Arkansas, but this team will have to learn like, okay, you're not sneaking up now. You're ranked. You're supposed to bring it every single night. No doubt about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us. Just one more time for the uh, Sooner Scoop YouTube YouTube viewer out there. Two months, SoonerScoop.com, one dollar. Two months, one dollar. Promo code OU1, as you can see behind me on the screen. We will be back here from the Suterscoop.com studio on Thursday. Going to wrap up a little bit of a Big 12 postseason awards. Four Sooners named to that. Dylan Gabriel, unanimous first unanimous. team selection today, which, you know, I think probably speaks to a, uh, you know, a number of things, but probably had a better year than a lot of people wanted to uh, admit, right? 
Absolutely. I've, I've been bullish on him, so I'm. It, it's kind of cool to see him get that unanimous honor. No doubt about it. And then we will uh, be back to talk a little bit more about Seth Luttrell as well as Joe John Finley taking over the offensive side of the football for Oklahoma. For Bob Prisbillo, I'm Eddie Radosovich. We'll talk to you next time.